everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, I'm proud to present an up close and personal in depth look with the all new Bugatti Chiron. Big thanks to Bugatti for providing this opportunity today, as well as the folks in the Encino Glass House for allowing us to use this beautiful location. In this review, we'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clipping over the performance data, and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in. Start it up, let it run. The Chiron comes with two aluminum keys. The main fob is wrapped in stitched leather to match the interior's color theme. Like the radiator emblem up front, the fob's Bugatti logo is made using pure silver and enamel. The speed key, which unlocks the potential for maximum speed runs, is a bit smaller and polished to a high sheen. Each key also has its own storage area within the interior. The main fob can be locked in place to the right of the steering column, while the speed key stows in a little pocket to the left of the driver's seat. Like the Veyron, the Chiron is completely bespoke, with limitless ways you're able to personalize it to ensure it looks like no other. Options range from colors and finishers to wheels, exposed carbon fiber bodywork, upholstery, and so much more. To start, just make sure you have the key fob within the interior, then simply put your foot on the brake and hit the blue engine start button in the bottom right hand corner of the steering wheel to go. The Chiron adopts electrically assisted rack and pinion steering to replace the Veyron's hydraulic setup. Specific stats are not available yet, but the Veyron had an overall ratio of 17.2 to 1, took 2.5 turns to lock, and had a turning circle of 39.3 feet. The switch to EPS should not only enhance powertrain efficiency for the next generation Bugatti, but allow for greater tuning and adaptability to different driving modes. The Chiron also receives redesigned front and rear axles, while the double wishbone suspension features newly developed chassis bushings that are bolted directly to the monocoque. Bugatti claims these changes yield more immediacy and readiness to driver input. Key emphasis was placed on the responses of the steering, brakes, and the accelerator pedal to create a car that feels more direct with excellent directional stability. It's all routed through a sporty three-spoke flat-bottom steering wheel that can be had fully leather-wrapped or a combination of carbon fiber like you see here. The detailing is wonderful, featuring plenty of bright work and polished hollow aluminum spokes, not to mention thick grip bolsters at 10 and 2. Controls for the infotainment, hands-free telephone, and driver information systems can be found in the upper spokes. In addition to the starter button, a dial to the opposite side houses a variety of drive modes that we'll cover later in the video. It's all finished off by the Chiron logo in the bottom spoke and a button to engage launch control. Like the Veyron, the Chiron sends its power to a permanent all-wheel drive system through a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. It's been thoroughly updated to handle the insane torque output of the redesigned W16 engine. The all-wheel drive system is rear biased by default with torque being sent to the front on demand by Haldex coupling on the front differential. Further control is provided by an electronic lock and rear differential. Most of the transmission's internals are new, including the synchros, hubs, forks, and even the transmission oil. Bugatti claims the new six-plate clutch is also the largest, highest-performing clutch ever used on a passenger car. All of this was done while maintaining the same weight as the previous DCT. One thing that hasn't changed is the pattern of the electronic shifter. By clicking it to the right, you can switch between automatic or manual shifting with red matching downshifts. Clicking it to the left puts it in neutral, while left and down is reverse. A backup camera will appear on the right side of the new instrument cluster. To place it in park, just press the top button on the shifter, which is beautifully finished in polished aluminum and leather. Manual shifting can be performed via the metal paddle shifters mounted behind the steering wheel or by the console shifter itself. The Veyron was able to perform a gear change in less than 150 milliseconds, but the Chiron is claimed to be even quicker at just 100 milliseconds. So let's go ahead and flip on the automatic LED headlamps and the hazards.
When the Bugatti Veyron debuted back in 2005, it turned the automotive world upside down as one of the most technologically advanced supercars ever created. Featuring a quad-turbocharged 16-cylinder engine, the original Veyron 16.4 was capable of accelerating to 60 miles an hour in less than 3 seconds and hit an incredible top speed of 253 miles per hour. Of course, that only tells part of the story as to achieve numbers like that in the first place, it takes an incredible amount of engineering know-how with regards to cooling, aerodynamics, and stopping power. A total of 450 Veyrons were produced over a period of about 10 years, including 300 coupes and 150 roadsters. Two of which, the Supersport and Grand Sport Vitesse, both hold world speed records of about 268 and 254 miles per hour, respectively. The Chiron represents the next chapter for Bugatti and is claimed to be the most powerful, fastest, most luxurious, and the most exclusive production super sports car in the world. The name behind this new Bugatti was inspired by Louis Chiron, a famous racing driver who saw tremendous success with the brand back in the 1920s and 30s amongst his highly successful career. In fact, the Chiron script is actually an abstracted form of his signature. The Chiron is a completely new development for Bugatti that takes everything that made the Veyron an icon and elevates it to a new level of prestigious performance, a car that is as well rounded as it is opulent. A few highlights include a new carbon fiber monocoque, a newly designed adaptive chassis, bespoke tires, a redesigned W16 engine, and so much more. The Chiron will be limited to 500 units and come at a base price of 2.4 million euro, or between 2.6 and 2.7 million US dollars. Like the Veyron, it'll be completely built by hand at the company's French headquarters in Molsheim. With the market launch coming up later this year, at this point a third of the total production has already been pre-ordered. The Chiron is built on a rolling chassis concept and features a redesigned carbon fiber monocoque that takes about four weeks to produce. The rear end of the chassis is also made from carbon fiber, unlike the Veyron, stainless steel structure helping shed 8 kilograms or 17.6 pounds of weight. It's attached to the monocoque by 12 titanium bolts. Carbon fiber also makes its way to the flat underbody and many other components throughout. With a torsional rigidity of 50,000 newton meters per degree of twist and a flexural rigidity or bending resistance of about 0.25 millimeters per ton, the Chiron has a level of stiffness comparable to Le Mans prototype race cars. With all the additional carbon fiber, weight remains similar to the Veyron despite being a larger car. The Chiron is longer by 3.2 inches, it's wider by 1.6 inches, and it's taller by 0.3 inches, leading to greater interior room and cargo space. While the Veyron used a combination of aluminum and carbon fiber for its bodywork, the Chiron's body is entirely made from carbon fiber for reduced weight. Wearing Bugatti's newest design language is a smooth silhouette with more aggressive cues and only the highest levels of detail. Inspired by the iconic Bugatti Type 57S Atlantic, the Chiron incorporates a number of historical cues in a highly modern and technical package. Perhaps the most distinctive, aside from the C-shaped Bugatti lines around the doors, is the central fin which extends over the entire vehicle front to back. The one-piece Bugatti lines, while available in a variety of colors, comes in polished aluminum and are 2.8 meters or 9.2 feet long. They do an amazing job highlighting optional two-tone color themes, but also serve guide air towards the engine intakes and oil coolers. Any exposed carbon fiber panels you see are finished in six layers of clear coat for a glossy and lustrous surface. The complexity of the bodywork, especially the front fenders and rear compartment lid, will leave you speechless. Panel gaps are kept to a bare minimum, especially evident with the one-piece sections that extend from the A-pillars to the rear quarters. Up front, a unique 8i headlamp design consists of all LEDs, which Bugatti claims at only 90mm or 3.5 inches high are the flattest LED projector headlamps ever fitted to a production car. Each headlamp uses carbon fiber and aluminum elements. Despite a form-following function styling approach, the Chiron is beautiful from every angle. One of my favorite sections is the rear end which looks much like a concept car and was designed to ensure low drag and meet the cooling requirements we discussed earlier. It does this by creating a suction effect, drawing out 400% more air from the engine compartment. The LED tail lamps are integrated into one slender horizontal bar made from solid aluminum that also includes the reverse lights. It really emphasizes the car's width along with the full width rear wing. The Chiron's cooling system is one of the most sophisticated setups you'll find in any production automobile. 
When it comes to alleviating heat buildup caused by an engine of this caliber, aerodynamics will become an integral part in how effectively it's all managed. After all, Bugatti claims the engine gives off 3,000 horsepower worth of excess heat. Clever sculpting and duct work allows the air to pass through the body with minimal turbulence, helping maintain a low drag coefficient while appropriately cooling all of the car's systems. Downforce is said to be the same as the Veyron despite a lower drag coefficient, which should put it around 770 pounds in total, the majority of that is situated over the rear. Similar in concept to the Veyron, the Chiron has 10 radiators and 5 separate cooling circuits. The engine water circuit, otherwise known as the high temperature circuit, is composed of one large central radiator and two smaller auxiliary radiators located across the front fascia. The main radiator was raked back a bit further to increase surface area by 25%, thus increasing its effectiveness. The outer intakes also supplement the air condenser and provide additional brake cooling. The high temp system holds 37 liters or 9.8 gallons of water that is able to be pumped through the entire circuit in about 3 seconds. The low temperature circuit has a water capacity of 12 liters or 3.2 gallons and features a separate front and center mounted radiator to ensure the two water to air heat exchangers are able to maintain cool charged air temperatures, especially when in stop and go traffic. The other three circuits are fed by a pair of large side intakes just behind the doors. On the driver's side you'll find the engine oil cooler, while transmission oil and rear axle differential oil coolers are located on the passenger side. On top of all that, the Chiron also has an oil to water heat exchanger for cooling hydraulic fluids. Looking closer at the body, there's air curtains at the outer edges of the front fascia to channel air around the car and a lower splitter to guide air underneath the car. This is also the first car I've seen with three brake cooling channels per side or six in total, including two main channels adjacent to the headlamps and secondary channels within and underneath the fascia. In conjunction with a newly developed heat shield, the air extraction vents in the lower rockers help pull hot air out from the wheel wells. The flat underbody features special air guides and active front diffusers to maintain low drag and improve brake cooling as needed. Additional NACA duct work in the underbody cools the rear brakes and powertrain. Instead of having the rooftop snorkels, the engine air intakes reside right behind the side glass above the oil coolers. All of the heat from the engine compartment and oil coolers is passed through massive open sections to either side of the rear fascia. The piece de resistance is the new 3D Bugatti logo within the aluminum horseshoe grille. It's made of 970 fine silver and features 5 coats of enamel. It weighs 155 grams, 140 of which is pure silver, just one of many examples of the level of craftsmanship instilled into each Bugatti. The Chiron features forged aluminum wheels that measure 20 inches in front and 21 inches in the rear. They weigh about 10% less than the Veyron's wheels and are wrapped in bespoke Y-rated Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires, two 3530s in front and 355 25s in the rear. Compared to the Veyron's tires, another joint collaboration between Bugatti and Michelin, these have a larger contact batch by 14% and 12% respectively. Not only are they able to retain proper levels of refinement for daily use, they're also easier to install and are said to come at a lower cost than before. With this setup, the Chiron is able to pull upwards of 1.5 G of lateral acceleration. Of course, the Chiron boasts a massive set of brakes. With a car this powerful, it's an absolute necessity not just for performance but for safety. Special carbon ceramic discs made from lightweight carbon silicon carbide lead to improved corrosion resistance, performance, and durability. Each disc is a bit larger and wider than their predecessors despite weighing less. They also dissipate heat quicker for better track performance. You'll now find 16.5 by 1.6 inch discs up front and 15.8 by 1.5 inch discs in the rear. The new monoblock aluminum calipers feature titanium pistons of different sizes to ensure even pressure distribution on the brake pad to prevent irregular wear. Beefy 8 piston units are used in front while 6 piston units bring up the rear. Bugatti claims the Chiron will be able to stop from 62 miles an hour at 102 feet. Provided an added measure of deceleration is the rear spoiler which doubles as an air brake. The fully independent suspension consists of double wishbones and adaptive dampers at each corner. Toward the bottom left of the steering wheel is a small rotary dial that allows the driver to switch between a handful of different modes to adapt the Chiron to various driving scenarios. These include lift, EB, auto, autobahn, and handling. 
As the name suggests, Lyft raises the car to clear speed bumps in driveways or any other instances where extra clearance is needed. EB Auto is your normal setting where the car will adjust the chassis height and shock absorbers automatically based on speed and road conditions. Driving above 112 miles per hour engages Autobahn mode, which adapts the dampers for a comfortable and stable ride at higher speeds on the highway. It can also be selected manually if you prefer. For the sportiest drive though, handling mode sets everything up for greater performance and agility. The top speed is limited just a little bit lower in these three modes. In order to reach the maximum speed, you must manually engage a fifth driving mode known as top speed. By using the little aluminum speed key we talked about earlier, you simply insert it into the slot to the left of the driver's seat. Only after the car's relevant systems give the green light will the car hunker down to the ground and be ready for takeoff. Other systems affected by the drive modes include the electrically assisted steering, the adaptive aerodynamics including the rear wing, ride height, the all-wheel drive system, locking rear differential, and both the stability and brake control systems. Overall length is 178.9 inches with a width of 80.2 inches and a height of 47.7 inches. It rides on a 106.7 inch wheelbase and weighs around 4,400 pounds. Bugatti's 8 liter W16 engine has been almost completely redesigned for duty in the Chiron. Unlike a V16, a W16 is basically two V8 engines that have been intertwined together and share a single crankshaft. Similar to how a W12 is like two V6 engines mashed together, the cylinder layout resembles a W pattern instead of a V. The W configuration allows for a more compact engine design considering the amount of cylinders and displacement. The block and heads in the W16 are made from aluminum, while the valve train consists of Dulera head cams, four valves per cylinder, hydraulic lifters, and variable intake and exhaust valve timing. Bore and stroke both measure 86 millimeters and are accompanied by a 90 degree bank angle. The engine and transmission feature dry sump lubrication while fuel is delivered via 32 duplex injectors to optimize the air to fuel mixture with the engine's greater airflow. The original Veyron 16.4 developed 1,001 horsepower and 921 pound-feet of torque, an astounding figure still to this day, which was subsequently increased to 1,200 horsepower and 1,106 pound-feet of torque in later models. The Chiron develops an eye-opening 1,500 horsepower at 6,700 RPM and 1,180 pound-feet of torque between 2,000 and 6,000 RPM. Top speed is electronically limited to 261 miles per hour for road use, but with a speedometer that reads 500 kilometers per hour or 310 miles per hour, I have no doubt we'll soon have a new record holder when that limit is lifted. As I mentioned earlier, only when you're using the speed key can you reach the car's terminal velocity. In all other drive modes, the Chiron's top speed is limited to 236 miles per hour. Bugatti claims the Chiron can accelerate to 60 miles an hour in less than 2.5 seconds, 124 miles per hour in less than 6.5 seconds, and 186 miles per hour in about 13.6 seconds. A new two-stage turbocharging system replaces the Veyron's parallel system along with larger turbos to virtually eliminate lag. When accelerating from a standstill, only two of the turbos are in operation. The other two come alive at about 3,800 RPM to deliver the full 26.8 PSI of boost. What this should lead to is a very linear power curve from 2,000 RPM, high torque in the lower engine speeds, and an overall power output that's easily controllable through the engine's range. In addition to titanium connecting rods, there's a greater use of lightweight materials throughout to combat weight gain. For example, the intake tube, charge air system, and chain housing are all made of carbon fiber. The weight of the crankshaft has also been optimized. Because the turbos now generate more heat, new intercoolers were added to make sure the air remains dense for optimal combustion. In fact, this W16 takes in more than 60,000 liters or nearly 16,000 gallons of air per minute. The Chiron also benefits from a new titanium exhaust system featuring four pre-converters and two main catalytic converters. Not only does this system reduce back pressure over its predecessor, but the main converters are said to be about six times larger than what you typically see on a medium-sized car. The rear silencer is also made from titanium, and I think the whole system weighs about 20 kilograms or 44 pounds. It's all routed through six tailpipes with four sticking out the rear and two pointing downward. The latter creates a blown diffuser effect, similar to Formula One, that increases downforce in conjunction with the large carbon fiber diffuser out back. 
fuel economy data is not yet available, but for perspective, the Veyron was rated by the EPA between 8 miles to a gallon in the city and 14 miles to a gallon on the highway. It required premium fuel and carried a 26.4 gallon tank. Official numbers for the Chiron will likely be available later this year. The Chiron's interior is a tailor-made masterpiece of innovative designs and high-quality materials. It's almost impossible to see in the daytime, but when you open the doors at night, the puddle lamps shine the Chiron logo on the ground. Unlike most hypercars, the Chiron has a noticeable Grand Tourer side to it. Like the Veyron, it has a very simple and clean layout, only it's been modernized to the fullest extent, creating a more ergonomically friendly and accommodating space. The redesigned monocoque increases headroom by 12 millimeters, or about half an inch, while the slender new center stack significantly frees up space across the dash to open up the cabin. With an excellent seating position for the driver, smaller A-pillars, and significantly more exposed carbon fiber, the Chiron looks and feels more like a sports car without sacrificing the level of craftsmanship and attention to detail we've come to expect from Bugatti. This is perhaps one of only a few cars in the world where you won't find any plastic trim pieces, just leather, carbon fiber, aluminum, or even Alcantara if you so choose. In fact, Bugatti offers 31 different colors of leather and 8 colors of Alcantara. Of course, special color requests can be made if you're looking for something truly unique. Bugatti offers three different seating options for the Chiron as well. A standard version is said to be a good, well-rounded seat with a combination of electric and manual adjustments. The sport seats have polished aluminum belt openings for four-point racing harnesses and likely come with full manual adjustment. This example, though, has the comfort seats, which feature full power adjustment, lumbar support, and even memory functions. Despite having the performance that it does, these seats are especially comfortable. There's plenty of padding where it matters the most and excellent lateral and shoulder support. To the left of the driver's seat is where you insert and or stow the speed key for top speed runs. It's contained within a switch panel that also houses the memory settings and electronic parking brake. The headrests are fixed and feature Chiron embroidery. The steering wheel is manually adjusting. Another key theme designers wanted to achieve with this car was a true sense of symmetry in the interior. They did this by creating a C-shaped open oval that divides the center of the interior, emulating the Bugatti lines across the side profiles. This allows for a clear separation of the driver and passenger compartment. If that's not enough, a long, continuous, dimmable LED light bar begins in the center console and flows up and across before meeting with the rearview mirror. The lights surround this machine from a single piece of aluminum. As you'd expect, storage is rather limited, but it does seem to be a bit better than what you would get in a Veyron. The compartment that resided between the seats has been eliminated. Instead, there's two open pockets and two pop-out drawers in each of the lower door panels. You also have coat hooks behind the seats and a small tray in the center console that can be used for stowing a phone or other similar sized items. The glove box is electrically actuated and it has a modest amount of space. Not only is it lined in soft material, but it's also cooled. With the carbon fiber monocoque, the Chiron is designed to be an inherently safe car, but even so, there's six airbags throughout the interior. In fact, three of which, including the passenger side front and both of the seat mounted side airbags, are designed to shoot through a carbon fiber housing. Stability control can be disabled by a button underneath the driver's side of the dashboard. There's aluminum pedals, LED interior lighting, and at least in this example, a perforated leather headliner. Now let's go ahead and see if she sounds.
quickly run through some of the interior's tech highlights. First off is the new instrument cluster, surrounded by an aluminum housing, it consists of three compact displays that surround the analog speedometer. The left and right TFT displays house information, digital tachometer, and the entire infotainment system. This in conjunction with the steering wheel controls allows the driver to be always focused ahead without any distractions from the center stack. The instrument cluster is also adaptive, displaying only what's necessary based on what drive mode you're in. Bugatti says the faster the Chiron is driven, the simpler the layout becomes, such as hiding the infotainment system. The simplicity created by integrating all of this tech allows for a beautifully slender floating center stack. It houses the gear selector and four round anodized aluminum dials that correspond to the climate control and heated seats. Rounding everything off is a bespoke high-end sound system claimed to be the most luxurious sound system available on a super sports car. Each of the four tweeters use a one carat diamond membrane to deliver a crystal clear sound. There's a lot that goes into this audio system, it can even be adjusted for different interior materials. We've already talked about how redesigning the monocoque allowed for greater interior space, but there's also additional cargo space in the front luggage compartment. This is mostly thanks to angling of the front radiators, which not only allowed for greater cooling surface area compared to the Veyron, but for the first time you can now stow an airplane approved suitcase. You won't be taking many extended vacations with it, but what's there is usable more now than it ever has been before. There's also a 12 volt power outlet and easy access to your windshield washer fluid and brake fluid reservoirs. It's all aligned in what appears to be soft Alcantara. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the all-new Bugatti Chiron. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's always a lot more where that came from. Take care everyone. Surfaces. It also lowers ride height by 10 millimeters or about 0.4.